Hey developers, what is going on? It's another video short subject. Today we're gonna to be covering how to install the developer edition of SQL Server and the management tools for it. And these are the tools configured, how you're gonna need them to follow along in this course. So let's get to it. I'm gonna be working inside Windows Sandbox here, and I'll install this in the Sandbox because I already have SQL Server installed. But at least you can follow along here with the steps to do it on your laptop. So I go into Google and I'm just gonna search SQL Server Developer Edition. And that'll take me to the SQL Server Downloads page. If you scroll down on the page, you see these free specialized editions. We want the developer edition. So I'm gonna to go to download now, and that's gonna download my SQL Server. SQL Server installs in two pieces. There's the actual database server. That's what holds all of your data. That's the thing that you query to get data out or in or do your CRUD operations, which we'll talk about what that means in a second. And the client is the tool that you interact with that talks to the database. I'm going to be using SQL Server Management Studio as my client for this course, but you can also choose other clients. There's other database front end tools. You can do this from command line. There's all different ways. I find the SQL Manager the easiest way although some people do prefer to use uh, VS Code or even Visual Studio has built-in tools for databases. So let's go ahead and run what we've downloaded. Normally, I would just go through a basic install, but let's go ahead and do a custom one so that you can see some of the options. So this is asking where should it download SQL Server 2? And I'm gonna leave the default, but you could change this to your download folder. And it tells you how much space you need and how big the download is. Okay, once it's done, it'll auto launch. So just be patient. This is the part that gets a little confusing for some people uh, because they're looking through these links and saying, well, how do I install this thing? And the reason is you're on the planning tab. So if we go down one to the installation tab, this is where we're going to find the options to actually install SQL Server. So we can do a new SQL standalone installation or add features to one that's already installed. Or we can add other things like reporting services if we want to be able to create reports. Here we can install the SQL Server management tools. That's the front end client I was talking about. And this is also available as a standalone installer outside of this download. So let's go ahead and choose the first one to create a new SQL Server standalone installation. We're gonna choose the developer edition, otherwise we would need a product key. Accept the terms or we're not gonna be able to install. And this checkbox will update SQL Server along with other tools on your system using the Microsoft Update feature of Windows. So you can go ahead and select that to keep everything up to date. In this sandbox, I'm not able to run the update service. So I'm gonna uncheck that, but that should work on your system. So I'll go back and uncheck. At this point, it's installing the setup files for the options that we've chosen so far. All right, so now we are at the install rules screen. And here it's going to run some checks to see if you have everything you need to install SQL Server. So. What you want is green checks all the way down here, although the warning on Windows Firewall is okay. If we click on this warning, you can see that it's saying that we may need to make sure that the correct ports are open. 
And that's really more um, warning us that if we want to access this database from outside of our machine, we're going to have to open up ports in the firewall. Otherwise, it's going to block those connections. We shouldn't run into those kinds of issues for this course, though. So if any of these are showing up as failed, you can probably Google those. I think pretty much everybody gets the green checks here. And you can always try to fix the problem and click rerun and it'll recheck these. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the warning for the firewall and hit next. Here's where we pick the features that we want to install for our database. So we definitely want our database engine because that's what runs the whole database. SQL Server replication is a way to mirror a SQL Server so that you can run your services in a cluster and have more than one server responding to traffic and you have to route your traffic to the appropriate server. It has a few different ways of keeping the data replicated between two instances. We don't need that. Machine learning services are if you want to use R, Python, Java to do machine learning in the SQL Server environment. We don't need that for this course either. Honestly, I don't know that much about that on the SQL Server side. Full text and semantic extractions for search. So we may play around with this. Uh, we may not. I'm going to leave it off for now, but this gives you kind of a full text search way to uh, search for things in your database. It might come in handy if we want to allow people to type kind of sentences into the search box and have SQL Server figure out which records that it thinks uh, are, are matches. But for now, we're going to go with something more simple because the syntax of doing this is different than regular SQL. So if we scroll down, uh, the rest of these are things that are not within the scope of this course. And you can look through the rest of these. They're just some other features that we are not going to be using. And then you can check out the directories on the bottom and that'll tell you where the files are gonna go. So if you need to find the actual backups, if you make database backups, they're gonna be in one of these feature directories actually below those feature directories. So let's hit next. You can install more than one SQL Server on a machine. And if you do that, you have to give it what they call a named instance where every instance gets a name and you can differentiate one installation from another installation. In this case, we're only installing one SQL Server. So we're gonna use the default instance. If you ever need to come back and you want to install more than one, then you would just choose named instance and give it a unique name that's not already used. And it'll list any instances that are already installed in this box. SQL Server runs as services on your computer. So here you can choose which account they run as, and you can select the startup type so in this case, what it's saying is the agent and the browser are not going to run by default. You'll be able to start the SQL Server agent manually if you go into your services snap in. And the actual database itself is going to run automatically. And you can stop it if you want to, but when you reboot your computer, it's going to run. So if you don't want that to run, maybe it's slowing down your machine, you can set this to manual and then just start it when you want to. And you just start it by typing start and type the word services. And in this services app is where you'll find all the list of services. If you go to the standard tab, you can get rid of all this white space. And you can just right click any of these services and you can start and stop them. And you can see that these are uh, some of them are manual, some are disabled where they won't start, some are automatic. So if it's running, then you can right click and stop. And once this installs, these three items will be listed in this window and you'll be able to start and stop them at will. Since this is a sandbox, I'm going to leave it on automatic. Um, I have it on automatic on my computer, but 
I have had other computers that weren't quite as fast, and I did have that on manual. And when you go to connect and it doesn't work, then you remember, oops, I forgot to start my service. All right, so let's leave that as is, and let's hit next. Using this wizard page, you can set SQL Server up to allow logins from either Windows or mixed mode, which allows you to create SQL Server logins. That's important if you're running things in the cloud or you have a SQL Server on-prem and your code is running in the cloud. There are a bunch of situations where you need a SQL login because your authentication for your Windows network is not trusted by SQL Server because it lives on a different network. You can actually run into this if you just want to create a simple website online and you buy one of the cheap hosts, you put your web code up there, and you want to set up your connection string to your database in configuration, and the SQL Server there does not belong to just you, right? There's, there's a bunch of people that rent space on that web host, so everybody on that web host gets their own login and password, and this is where that comes in. So while it is less secure, um, I find that yeah, I've needed it so many times, I always choose mixed mode here. And when you choose mixed mode, it wants a password for the built-in administrator account. And that built-in account is called SA, which is server administrator. So when you log in as SA, you need a password. So you should choose one. Um, I'm going to keep it simple here because this is on a sandbox that I'm about to delete. So I'm just going to type password123 exclamation. But you should make yours secure because anybody that can get to your computer and your machine may be on the internet so you don't want people connecting to your database and hacking away at a password and possibly getting in. And then once you have your password and you've confirmed your password, um, I also click add current user. And the current user is not this SA and the password for SA, that's who I'm logged into Windows as. So because this is a sandbox, it's got some really weird name, but normally it would look like machine name slash Jeff. Or if you're on a domain, it would be domain name slash and then your name on the domain. All right, so let's hit next. And that's it. We're ready to go uh, and, and install this server. So click install. All right, mine actually failed uh, because I'm in this sandbox and apparently SQL Server will not install in the sandbox, but yours should have finished. So go ahead and click finish and it'll bring you back to our installation tab here. So if you go on your start menu now, you should see something under M for Microsoft SQL Server 2019. And if you notice, there's nothing here that allows you to do anything but configure your database. And that's because we haven't installed the management tools. So let's do that now. It is the third one down on my window, install SQL Server management tools. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna bring you to a web page where you can download the management tool. And this is something you're gonna go to over and over again because every time there's a new release, you have to come to this page and download it from this link right here. And the current version as of this video is 18.9.2. This wizard is much more straightforward than the database server wizard. This is more like what you're used to where you can just keep all the defaults and click next, next, next. So go ahead and leave that and just hit install. Okay, and now we're done, and it's telling us that a restart is required in order to complete setup. So go ahead and restart with 
And that should do it. That'll install SSMS or SQL Server Management Studio. So go ahead and click restart to restart your machine and you should be good to go. If you set your services to automatic or left them at the default, they'll be ready to go and uh, hope it does everything you need it to do. All right, we'll see you in the next episode online.